read the riot act to those in power, but the conversation was longer. The Solicitor General of the Government of India said something which was alarming. He said, I didn't want to say this, but most of the unclaimed dead bodies are those infiltrators who came with a particular design and got killed. I will come to the point. Are foreign infiltrators waging war in Manipur? Who are foreign fighters? And who are they fighting for? With me, joins me, my input editor, Brijesh Pandey. So the question is, are there foreign fighters in Manipur? There could be, but I think you know if this, if the if the Solicitor General of uh, this country uh, makes this kind of loaded statement, uh, I would have expected him to you know to elucidate more and it also tell the country about you know who exactly these foreign fighters are. If you look at the way the entire thing has panned, it is basically kind of attributing the fact that you know that these are Myanmaris who have come there to help the cookies. Other than that, I mean, if these are Myanmari terrorists who have uh, 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 who have entered into India uh, with a nefarious design, there should be there should be talk about it. You yeah, know, are we, are the centre should come. Are we forward? saying that? Are we saying that Manipur is like Kashmir? Are we saying that Manipur is like Chechnya? Are we saying that Manipur is like uh, Syria? Foreign fighters, you know, for Tushar Mehta to say this, the presence of foreign fighters just injects another dimension to Manipur conflict. Well, it does, but Karthik is. If you look at the way the entire conversation has been carried out till now, you know, uh, illegal immigration, poppy culture, poppy cultivation, or, or narco terrorism, or these foreign fighters. These are loosely used based term only to signify one ethnicity and not other. And that is the reason why when 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 Tushar Mehta says that dead bodies, most of dead bodies are those infiltrators who came with a particular design and okay. got killed. Where, when did they got killed? Okay. And why was there no talk I about I think on our screen we will be able to see uh, Khuraija Mathuba, spokesperson Kakumi. A very warm welcome to you. So do you think there are foreign fighters in Manipur? Yes. Uh, no, we have been uh, claiming this from... Is it yes the... or no? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we have been claiming uh, the involvement of certain... Uh, uh, foreign origin uh, militants, uh, you know, uh, uh, take, uh, taking part and uh, attacking towards the Mete villages in coordination with the uh, certain um, militant groups who are in suspension of operation with the government of India. Because uh, on the uh, last, uh, uh, last week of May, uh, when the Union Home Minister visited uh, Impal, there was a fierce battle uh, at the uh, Sero Sugnu area, that is in uh, Kakching district of uh, you know uh, 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 Manipur Valley, and in that place uh, there was a heavy gunfight between the two uh, sides uh, 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 for almost I think four consecutive days, and at the junction of a road, uh, four dead bodies were lying there, and the state forces couldn't even reach to the dead body and recover it. You know why? Because there were several, uh, you know, uh, uh, sniper attacks from strategic points, which the state government, or sorry, the state police force failed to, you know, uh, 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 what do you say, uh, 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 eliminate it. So are you saying, uh, are you saying, uh, Atuba, no, no, are you, say, no, Atuba, no, are you saying that, uh, you know, there are Myanmaris there? Are you saying that people are crossing the border? No, no, I'm coming to that point. When uh, finally the uh, headquarters of the UKLF, one of the Sioux signatory group groups, it was completely you know uh, taken over and destroyed by the state forces and the uh, Indian security forces, paramilitary forces and Indian army together. Later on, when the dead body was recovered, there was one body, uh, dead body lying there, uh, who was you know who, who was wearing a lungi, you know. A uh, Chin Kuki people that wears lungi is people of Myanmar origin. Man Kukis in Manipur don't wear lungi. Lungis are wear only, you know, wear by people only from across the border. No, no. And there were also several evidence, video evidence, drone evidence that, uh, you know, drone camera has captured some photos where some videos where lungi wearing people holding automatic rifles where you know in the certain camps in the hill areas but we are yet to come up with certain you know uh, uh, facts and figures and because of that 
they have been denying the you know state is also denying from quite some time even you know uh, the assam rifles were also denying when we when we make this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, reports to them because we are not having sufficient evidence to prove that that things are happening but ultimately as they have intensified their attacks in several okay. front uh, so surrounding the no, no, there the, the, uh, the, uh, there is one more thing you know you have released a press communique today the press communique say that the so called itlf kuki leader should not play politics over the dead bodies every dead of the methi group was being cremated at their native villages with due respect and recognition by their own and near dear ones likewise we expect the itlf kuki people to follow the same norm in performing the rites of the deed encroaching over the state land is also a violation you also wrote you also wrote and i'll read it out till date koki groups have never done any uh, have done anything that is acceptable to the law of the land right from the day one and third of the incident you are saying that uh, uh, that state land encroaching over the state land is also violation of laws and cremating all together to newly to newly create a mass grave at the evicted areas of methi villages will not only pro provoke the sentiment of the people in both areas so there is a mass cremation which is going on why are you objecting to it number 1 they are playing politics over the dead bodies because you know this is a you know there is a sudden eruption of violence between the two sides that you know both sides have uh, you know suffered uh, injuries and and till now every dead bodies which has been you know uh, at the side of the maitais they have been uh, you know transparently recovered uh, from the morgue there is a procession of uh, people carrying the dead bodies and uh, there are uh, the, the rituals are you know properly performed in public and every dead body has been transparently performed their last rites and duties however till then several you know uh, uh, fierce gun fights and exchange of fires being you know uh, held all over the hill area surrounding the valley manipur valley and there were unofficial reports from the state forces and people that many death has been you know uh, also being you know made by the other side or the cookie side but we couldn't get any transparent data or okay. record of the dead my, bodies my colleague vijesh has a question for you hiding. sir yeah uh, mr thuba i just wanted to understand because because you know this is this is one narrative which is very perplexing for me and i really want to understand yeah. from you you know when you say that su groups are out there then why yeah. is center not cancelling the tripartite agreement with them question number 1 and is, question number 2 yeah. so i'll okay. i'll, I'll uh, because you know it's interesting when you're claiming when when please. the uh, solicitor general of this country claims that there are several bodies or several foreign fighters how come it has never Uh, never been talked about you know they talked about foreign infiltrators they have been talked about fighting and all and firing and all but but then who are these uh, people for, uh, fighting for and why did till now no foreign element or uh, you know foreign infiltrators nar Bilkul. narrative came forward bilkul uh, uh, your first question was about uh, uh, the su group uh, this thing no huh? yeah the su groups yes the state government has already you know uh, withdrawn unilaterally from the su tripartite talks and the center has been you know uh, what do you say uh, tolerating for this you know 90 days long we have been appealing and you know we have been raising we have been pursuing the uh, union government even the home ministers from time to time that we are we have enough evidence to prove that they have violated enough of the sue ground rules and even the security advisor of the state uh, has already in the they are not doing enough and because of that when we held the national a uh, press conference in new delhi on uh, last week we 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 clearly you know uh, stated that the government of india is giving a legal protection to the you know uh, uh, narco terrorist militant groups they are trying to legitimize their existence in the territory of india there were leaders who is this narco terrorist you know, group sir who is this nar narco terrorist group mr thuba and because you know initially I'll, I'll 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 tell you one thing initially if you remember you know uh, the chief minister claimed that 31 kuki terrorists have been killed i hope you remember yeah. that what happened yeah. to them what, you know to which group they belong till now till date no explanation has come forward or no detail has come forward as to who were those 31 people or 21 people who were shot dead by uh, by the armed forces and why is is it that the central government is not agreeing to your version of what you are saying about su they are saying 99 plus percent of arms are still there in the lock and key yeah 
there are other dimensions of this politics because we 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 have been you know closely following and monitoring the development in Manipur right from the moment when they signed the suspension of operation agreement in 2008. When the first agreement was, uh, you know, there was a unilateral uh, kind of bilateral ceasefire between the Assam Rifles and the Kuki militants in 2005, which the state government was no, no, not an official, officially a party in that, you know, ceasefire. Later on in 2008, when they formalized, the state government is also being made a party. But after that, after that, the Assam Rifles and the Kuki militants are being, you know, uh, coordinating from, for quite some time. Maybe, you know, they are trying to uh, work in coordination with to uh, execute certain counterinsurgency operations to other groups, other non su groups. And I think they have even succeeded in certain level. But that doesn't amount to, you know, uh, you know, uh, coordinate in such a way that the cookie militants which are coordinating with the Assam rifles should not turn their guns, turn their barrel of the guns to towards the uh, citizen of the uh, uh, state. Therefore, by that time, since 2008 to till date, the cookie militants okay. have been, you know, enjoying complete immunity from the central security forces. Okay. And because of taking uh, Atuba, new advantage of that, I think you made a point. Harboring in, no, no, no. They have been harboring in illegal immigrants from across the border and they have been utilized in poppy cultivation and drug trafficking. Okay. And from that, 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 you know, that, Atuba, that you know, actually our debate was about the, the Tushar Mehta. Okay, point taken. That is your uh, statement. We are going by what the Solicitor General said in the Supreme Court of India. It's a verbatim thing. Uh, a very warm welcome to you, Mr. Kipgen. How are you? I'm Mr. good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for being in our show. Mr. Kipgen, your first response to what Tushar Mehta said. Foreign fighters in Manipur. Is it true? Do you agree? Uh, I didn't get you come again. He said, I oh, don't want to say, but most of the unclaimed dead bodies are those of infiltrators who came with a particular design and got killed. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, come this, this kind of statement coming from a very respectable position, such as the Solicitor General, uh, I, I, would, I would like to believe it. But the problem here is that I am not... <clears throat> I'm not as yet questioning his statement, but I am pleading uh, to his position, the Solicitor General of India, if, if it, you know, for the, for the common man like us, if he would have been able to produce <clears throat> some sort of data to back up his statement. Because on the other hand, we also have the other, uh, the other advocates in the Supreme Court in that, in that same hearing saying that, uh, you know, for the sake of compensation, the bodies have to be identified and the, and the families have, have to be contacted. Now, if and when where a body has not been identified yet, 118 bodies or so that is being claimed uh, to be there in the, uh, various morgues in Imphal, if the bodies are not yet identified, on what ground or how is the Solicitor General able to specifically say that these are the bodies of illegal infiltrators? As much as I would love to believe his, the very strong statement made by him, we, the common man, we are yet to see some data to back up his statement. And I am not yet, as of now, uh, 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 you know, uh, accusing or I'm not, I'm not as of now uh, questioning the statement. But coming from a respectable position as a Solicitor General of India, we expect him to back up his data so that we, the common man, are made aware that yes, because if such is the case, we have been hearing this, uh, this narrative for months and months now, but not even once have anyone tried to come up with data to back up such claims, very tall claims. And these, uh, these uh, you know, unconfirmed Do you think it leads to stereotyping? Actually adding fuel to the present, to the present uh, inferno in Manipur. Mr. Kipkin, do you think that these statements lead to stereotyping because it didn't come with data, it didn't say how many people, it didn't say who sent them, it didn't say with ethnicity and stock they belong to? Exactly, exactly. Because uh, illegal infiltrators, when you say illegal infiltrators, it, it, you know, you're not, at the same time, you're not pointing out which community those infiltrators belong to, which nationality they come from, are they your, are they your Myanmaris? Are they, are they also Bangladeshis, for example? So uh, such, such you know, tall claims without, with nothing to back them up, uh, it is very, it's a, it seems, you know, uh, very disheartening 
for a certain section of the population uh, to hear this coming from a position such as the solicitor general uh, mr kibgin i just wanted to understand you know when he says that there are foreign infiltrators waging war in manipur you know the first question is like who are these foreign infiltrators and second and perhaps rather the most important aspect of part of the conversation would be why is the solicitor general saying this because you know till now we have we have spoken about infiltration we have spoken about you know how arms and all uh, can be smuggled we have spoken about the porous borders and all but why would solicitor general make a statement about which you know there has not been any uh, substantiated claims so far in the 3 months of uh, you know our coverage in the coverage at large exact exactly my point for example you know uh, on a discussion like this on a forum like this if if myself uh, re representing certain community our uh, brother athoba representing his community yeah. if we have these claims and counter claims to a certain extent it is understandable that we can say like okay sometimes you know a person a personality may speak up certain things because of his because of his you know because of his feeling his, his affiliation but for a person like Solic solicitor general uh, who should be un totally unbiased uh, when he comes up with these with these claims you know uh, it, it's disheartening for common citizens like okay. us you for know example uh, when he says when he says illegal infiltrators now he, he hasn't he hasn't mentioned which community so in a way uh, we you know we don't we don't we are not in a position to 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 counter claim that there is no such in illegal infiltrators but at the same time in all these narratives when you talk about illegal infiltrators metes are never a question or the issue of what the nagas are never question it has always been labeled with a particular community and here i would suggest that the solicitor general should be a little you know uh, should be a little careful because uh, he may say things in with a certain in a, within a certain context but this context when it comes to the national media it is it is understood only as illegal infiltrators belonging to the kuki community because that is what the narrative the state government has been pushing so far so it is unfortunate in that aspect you know there uh, the, you know i would like to draw your attention on one more subject because you know if we are talking about foreign militants you know we are we are saying that manipur has become like kashmir or when we talk about foreign militants we are talking about you know like a war theater like chechnya but before that you know i had the opportunity to ask this question to mr athuba mr kibgen uh, the kokmi has issued a press release they are saying that there is a mass burial which is going to take place in chura chandpur on 3rd of august and kokmi has uh, released a Uh, there is a press release saying that you shouldn't go for you you know you shouldn't be creating a mass grave there. Let me just uh, re uh, read that out for you because it uh, it says that uh, it says and the exact word is encroaching over the state land is also a violation of laws and cremating all together to nearly create a mass grave at the evicted areas of Maiti symbol of. Uh, Maiti, uh, the to evicted Maiti villages will not only provoke the sentiments of the people on both sides, but also as remain a symbol of enmity between the two neighboring villages forever. What is happening, Mr. Kigbin? Do you have any idea of that mass burial, Chura Chandpur? Mass burial, mass burial. The site uh, being in Chura Chandpur, uh, the exact you know location and the dynamics of that area. Uh, I would be wrong if I say I am well familiar with it. although i know uh, which areas it is being targeted but the particular uh, claims because uh, you know whether a part, whether a part of land is be it belongs to the state government or, or whether it is it belongs to the kuki community or a particular village that has always been contested uh, you know since 2 years back 3 years back the state government has always been alleging that we we are encroachers in government lands that we are encroachers in forest lands so this debate has always been there it is nothing new so so you know what 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 we the kukizo community claim is that these areas have we have always been part of it and that since the mlr and lr act is uh, has its own jurisdiction it is not it is not uh, applicable in the hill areas of manipur so along those lines these areas should be uh, you know uh, free free of any counter claims should be free free of conflict but that is not the case because in spite of clear cut uh, and properly stated uh, acts of the government the, such as the mlr and lr act we can we continue to see in uh, the way we see we continue to see encroachment by the state government into areas where they are legally not supposed to do so 
That okay. is that is how I would look at this. Okay. Position. Okay, I, I think Mr. Athuba wanted to respond because our, uh, our conversation is taking place on two lines. One on the issue of foreign fighters, which is like Manipur becoming a big theatre of war. And then you had these anti-national interests across the borders, Chinese or Myanmaris, affecting the security and integrity of Manipur. And the secondly is something which is going to happen tomorrow and press release has been issued. And it seems that it, it, it might have the capacity to disturb the peace. Mr. Athuba, you wanted to say something? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, see, uh, there is an intention uh, of hiding the uh, identity of the dead bodies uh, at several in instances in the past. There was a press you know, statement from the ITLF, the so-called uh, Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum representing the uh, uh, Kuki peoples from Churachanpur and all. They issued a statement saying that they were opposing the uh, you know identification of the dead bodies by the uh, district administration it was shocking because how why do they need to oppose identification of why? the dead bodies tell me come to the point why come to the point so it, that that clearly shows that there is something to be you know hidden from the uh, you know state, Say it, Mr. state Atuba, administration you know the name of state. my prog name of my program sir is to the point to the point but but kyun? that's to the point that's to the point. What because are they hiding? They must be hiding. They must be hiding certain, you know, identity of the dead bodies. They must be, you know, uh, not, not confident enough to, you know, prove that every dead body is, uh, you know. Are you a saying that they are foreign fighters? The are you saying that there must be foreign? There must be foreign fighters. That is why the solicitor general has boldly stated to the honourable Supreme Court. The solicitor general speaks on behalf of the government of India. He speaks on the behalf of the Ministry of Home Affairs. And he must be having certain intelligence inputs regarding the involvement of foreign, you know, elements. Therefore, that is why he, he is now able to come out. I Even know. we, Kokomi, also have been in the dark for past two months. We don't know what was really ha happening after closely following and observing the movement, the propaganda, the narratives continuously for 60, 70 days. Then only now we are coming out in public to, you know, uh, put our position. So are you that saying that? Are you proving. saying that the cremation tomorrow will also hide the fact that there must be foreign fighters? Are you alleging that, sir? We have already mentioned in our statement that all the dead bodies needs to be checked for their citizenship first. We then we need to check their antecedents, where their parents belong, where their grandparents belong, since when they become the citizen of India. Where is their permanent address? Do they have any land document? Which village do they belong? Because one of the professor in Hyderabad University, Mr. Kampan Swan, is now in, a, in a, 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 a the you know a, a behest of you know doubt in his citizenship. He is now under an FIR because his 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 identity is now in a very doubt position. His parents, his mother, and himself got enrolled in the voter list at the same year, and they don't even have a proper permanent address and the origin. So. You can answer that. This kind of situation, this kind of situation is now very much, you know, prominent now. Okay, Mr. Kipgen. Mr. Kipgen. Yeah, I, I wanted to speak uh, about, uh, you know, the 118 bodies. For example, here we are talking about uh, identifying bodies in Chitranpur. If, if it is a claim made by ITLF, I, I, I believe it will be in Chitranpur. Chalo, let's put that aside for once. Now, there are several other bodies at your behest. At the behest of the uh, you know, Mete community within within the Imphal Valley, there are 118 bodies, as per the uh, reports, uh, lying in JNMs and Rims Mall. What is stopping you from going and identifying those 118 bodies, and accordingly come up with the data that out of 118 bodies, so many are from Myanmar, so many are from Bangladeshi, this many have belongs to Mete community, this many to Kuki community, so on and so forth. That is, that could be a start, you know, to 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 clarify things. Now, uh, the bodies that is lying within in your vicinity, if you are with, without even identifying those bodies properly, you are accusing that you know some other you know bodies lying elsewhere uh, and uh, uh, putting uh, you know some doubts in that. Now, I, I will not I will not disclaim that in the sense that uh, you know I am not in a position to go and verify those bodies in Trichanpur. But uh, if, the, if the state government so desires and so uh, is, is willing, then they are able to, they, they can go tomorrow itself, identify the dead bodies in Imphal. Why is that not happening yet? In spite of this narrative of illegal immigrants and you know, encroachers going on for months and months now, why hasn't the state government at least 
come up with some data. For example, they can start with those dead bodies lying in Imphal. What is stopping you from identifying those? Take the bi biometrics, take, take their you know, identification. What is stopping the government? That is where I feel to understand. Because the way I see it, once this thing comes into clarity, then this narrative will not will be obsolete. They will okay. have to come up with some new narrative. Okay, okay, new narrative. You know, okay, okay. Let, let, Mr. Kidman, okay. From there again. Okay, let, uh, uh, let Mr. Thuba speak. Okay, Mr. Thuba. Yeah. See, identification of dead bodies has already, you know, begun by the state government. And that is why I told that when four dead bodies were recovered from Cerro area, one person was recovered with wearing lungi. Lungi wearing cookie means they are from Myanmar, number one. Other dead body is also going to be identified. And for everyone's information, on 28th of June 2023, there was a correspondence between the SP of Churachanpur and SP of Chandel, handing over certain Myanmar nationals, 10, uh, almost, I think, uh, 1, 2, three, 5, uh, 6, 19. 7, 8. Eight of, the, eight of the injured Myanmar nationals who are being injured with bullets and bomb, uh, uh, what do you say, bomb sharpeners. So these, that, these, 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 these patients are being treated at Churachanpur District Hospital. And they have been handed over to the, you know, Chandel police by the SP uh, Churachanpur. And the Assam rifle was very quick to, uh, you know, give a clarification on that. They said that they brought in injured, bullet injured, bomb injured, Myanmar nationals from uh, international border to Churachanpur district and given treatment. This is shocking. How could... Lekin sir, is there a part bhi hai? Is there just one 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 is there a yeah, no, 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 let me let me complete. Let me complete. Let me I have no problem. Ye par Assam rifle wale pe you know I have one issue. I just want to I just want to pick up their own security forces, you know. Kisi ko pasand hai na pasand hai. Kartik is a different different angle. You know, you know Assam rifles is also Mr. Thuba uh, manned by Indian Army officers. Correct, correct, and correct. The solicitor general so who what? made these claims. Yeah, hear me out. I mean, can I, can we, I share, we, we can don't I share some inputs I, I will there. not interrupt you, uh, uh, Mr. Thuba. That the point which I'm basically it's an attempt to understand. The Assam rifle is manned by Indian Army officers. Correct. So they will have no vested interest in indulging into this. Second thing is the solicitor general who is also an Indian Army, uh, Indian uh, Central Government uh, uh, law officer is making these claims. So why would the center act at cross purpose here? Bilkul, bilkul. Why would on one side they will accept no, see, that they are foreign militants yes. on the other side? And, 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 and here, and here, I would like to share some yes, some it points is, here. It is only see, now. That I, I show is, Mr. Kipkin. Show now. Mr. Kipkin on it. I came to hear about it. Please, please I hold on. I came on. to hear please about that on. incident. It is only and now. Then, so what 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 actually happened here was that these people fleeing from the Myanmar junta and because they had some grievous injuries. The Assam rifles on humanitarian ground. The Assam rifles. The way I the way I have heard the story is that they they informed immediately. They informed uh, they informed these uh, this SP Chandel. They informed SP Chuchanpur. So SP SP Chandel he gave the information to SP Chuchanpur that so and so many people properly identified, properly tagged. These individuals have been let in for medical treatment. And once the treatment is over, see they are they, they are on record. These are illegal immigrants, I would agree, and they are on record. They are not mixed with the population. It was so, everything was clear that nothing was hidden here. The SP Chandler. Yeah, you know, you, so this is fight. a democracy. You have been coming in my show for 90 days. For 90 days, News 9, we have done show on Manipur. No other channel has done it. You know, I, I, it's, it's a commitment I have displayed. But let's not politicize security forces. They might have their problems. They might have their faults. They might have their loopholes. They might have done something wrong. But let's, we will not politicize the security forces. You know, I don't want to go or uh, walk that road, sir. You can say any other and, thing. And, 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 and even no, here, even here. When, when the facts were not yet clear to the public regarding those seven, eight, you know, in, injured who were who were hospitalized in Churchanpur, the very next day, what the Valley newspapers came up with was that these people, these are illegal immigrants who died, uh, I mean, who, who faced grievous injuries fighting in Manipur. This was the first claim that they made. Thereafter, it became clear to the public that no, actually, these were injuries that that took place in the conflict in Myanmar and not in Manipur. S. P. Chandel himself clearly mentioned that. But yet we are very quick to grab these opportunities to put forward our narratives, you know, of illegal immigrants fighting in Madhipur, fighting for looking for independence here in Manipur. Now, it's time we, we start discussing things very maturely with, with facts to back up our 
accusation but you know but you know mr kimkin i completely agree with you but for tushar mehta to say that in the court is also is also a part of a narrative tushar mehta is solicitor general of this country you know you can disagree with mr tushar mehta but when he makes that in front of the chief justice of india yeah. i don't think it cannot be without any merit uh, mr athuba now you please complete your argument see how could how could certain number of people who have who sustain bullet injuries explosive injuries and all sort of you know injuries who are foreign nationals being brought 100 kilometers inside the territory of india given treatment and sending them back again what law is being applied do we apply the same law as in the rest of the country or do we have a separate law what kind of security measures are going on here therefore if there is an you know existence of you know same law that we have in the rest of the country then how on earth this kind of things could be happen let happen there is where the people did we, did raise its suspicion there is where the people raise its suspicion that these people who got bullet injuries who got you know a uh, uh, bomb explosive injuries this must be definitely people who are being engaging in the violent or uh, gun attack in the uh, you know many uh, uh, villages from uh, uh, across the hills and that is where those, the intelligence those, those the eight, nine, eight, eight or nine or, or so came into you know, uh, please wait please uh, tamil and tamil mr kickman mr kickman mr kickman please let athuba speak you know I, i i allowed you to speak i interrupted him the solicitor general come into you know such kind of uh, uh, revelation only after 30 days of this incident this incident happened in 28 of june solicitor general responded or come with the reports on 28 or 29th of july so he must have now enough evidence enough reports from the intelligence that armed foreign nationals are engaged involved and the local su operatives the su militant groups the so called su militant groups are in coordinatingly working they are in coordination and fighting towards the indigenous population of the state this is a clear threat of external aggression and therefore it has to be firmly deal with the law of the okay. land that is what our atuba ji okay atuba ji when we talk about law when we talk about law it is about individuals and when we talk about cases individuals should be tried why do we say these people i think there is a law if there is a su militant helping a foreigner he should be booked if there is a law a particular person even if he is a cookie he should be booked i think when you say a community that's where the problem is law is about individual state government is free to take that action band kar dijiye jitne log bahar se aaye hain but to say that every part of the cookie community is helping them is like stereotyping it is as i always say just because methis are a majority you cannot blame methis for majoritarianism agar wo majority mein hai doesn't mean that they are doing majoritarian politics and if cookies are spread across the border doesn't mean that they are inviting everyone it is the government's job matlab border pe cookie todna kada hai to sarkari log kade hain unko rokna infiltration mr kipgen no 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 actually yeah in the in the I'll come to you atuba ji atuba ji I'll come to you today in the press today the supreme court clearly asked the solicitor general to inform the supreme court the honorable supreme court as to how many bodies have been identified and how many would how many have remains to be identified when they meet again on the 7th of august now here 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 it, it goes to show that the supreme court does is not aware of the numbers they don't have the data yet but when the solicitor general makes these claims to us it seems that he has the data to us it seems that he has he has uh, you know clearly marked out uh, how many of these dead bodies belong to which community and when and when from which nation nationality they belong to that is that is a presumption i'm i'm saying it here that it seems that the solicitor general based on certain narratives is giving some presumptions that this is the likely outcome that is going to be and this and the truth will prevail when we meet on 7th of august on 7th of august it will be clear where he says most of them the, the dead bodies belong to illegal infiltrators so this is this is one part of it and and secondly uh yes eight nine of them foreign nationals were given medical treatment in our country india 
And these persons are not in hiding. They have not been uh, given a citizenship. They have not been issued ration cards or voter cards. What is the problem in that? Mm -hmm. That is my question. But okay. when you take, but when you take these narratives and and paint the entire cookies of population as those kind of persons who have infiltrated into India, who have who have got themselves other cards, voter cards, ration cards, and and become part of the Indian citizens, Indians, uh, you know, uh, the nation India, and now they are fighting fighting for a separate administration. Now this is no uh, complete complete. Completely false, and this is this is the kind of narratives that is, you know, widening the gap okay. between the two communities. That is where me as a leader, I don't speak like that. But but, you know, from the counterparts, from my, my friends from the valley, the leaders from the Métis community, when they see these things, you should be aware that there are many followers you have, that there are many people listening to you talk on national TV, and this is the kind of impact, negative impact that it has on the society. So. You know, in a way, we are kicking out all all hopes of peace and reconciliation when you when you time and again come up with such accusations and such stereotyping. Mr. Thuba, I just wanted to understand one thing from you. You know, because uh, we we have been talking about narratives. So when the Solicitor General, because it's an extremely important point that needs to be, uh, you know, completely uh, understood. When he makes a claim, something like you know that the foreign militants are fighting, foreign infiltrators are fighting the war. You know why? why you know the government has not come forward with any data to back it because you know if the government does that then it changes the entire nature of conflict the ethnic conflict which is panning out in the state of manipur it would it would help the yeah. rest of the country to get a perspective you, you, you know and we, we would know which country is fueling or trying to cash on in the fuel of fire which is you going know, on the state you of you know manipur. absolutely you know before before i allow mr athuba to answer that question mr kipgin let us quickly play out the bite of malikarjun kharge a delegation of the entire opposition leaders met the president of the country let's play out that bite hazaro weapons are sophisticated weapons are kahan se are wo sab private logon ke paas hai aur jab do community मैत्री कम्युनिटी और कुकी कम्युनिटी ये दोनों में अब जो लड़ाई चल रही है इसको शांति के साथ रखना है तो प्रधानमंत्री वहां पर विजिट करना चाहिए था बयान नौ दिन हुए अब तक वहां नहीं गए उसके बारे में बोले नहीं लास्ट में एक भाषण देंगे चले जाएंगे तो ये बड़ी दुख की बात है सो मिस्टर किडगेन इफ देर इज एन अपील विच इज बिंग मेड to avoid any tension in context of mass grave aap se main poochu i know you are not the in charge there use delay nahi kiya ja sakta can't that be delayed why is it so important to be done tomorrow um i am not able to confirm this as yet but the way i have heard our leaders our leaders have spoken to those in the in, in churchanpur that you know we should not take this as a final stand that it has to be on certain date it has to be in certain way uh, because right now uh, if if this is taking such a such a turn uh, then it would be disrespectful even for the burial you know of of our fallen comrades so the, the word has gone as far as i as far as i believe i know the word has gone uh, the, to if possible in confirm that but that is what but that's what i feel i i've heard that my leaders have discussed uh brijesh you know but coming to you uh coming to you do you think that there is going to be a debate in parliament next week and the prime minister is going to speak on this issue well uh, what i've been given to understand is that on 8th 9th Uh, the vote of no confidence motion will uh, the uh, the conversation on it will begin and on 10th the prime minister is likely to reply uh, to the vote of confidence which has been vote of no confidence which can be sought by uh, by the opposition okay. party mr athuba you wanted to come in you know uh, i uh, yeah, for yeah. a brief time i lost you please take your time uh, number one uh, when you say that uh, we are blaming the entire community that's completely wrong we never mentioned that no no uh, uh, mr thuba i am not say i am not I, mr thuba i am not saying Number. i am not saying that you are blaming the entire community i said i as a journalist feel that both communities should not blame each other i said no no i nobody said nobody blame them no no i did not say you are blaming i said community should not blame each other please go ahead i'm just clarifying yes, yes. community should not 
we also don't blame the entire community. Uh, my brother, Tangmilian Kipjen, we are quite familiar to each other and we know each other very well. The only issue is there are certain... You this know, is such a nice uh, thing uh, to have uh, said. This is such a nice thing yes. to have said. I'm very happy that you are yes. saying, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's such a it's such a nice thing to hear on this program. I've done this program for 90 days. It's such a nice thing. Yes, Thank yes. you. Thank you for the, saying that, at sir. The, at the very first phase of this, uh, you know, communal violence when it erupted, Tamilian and we jointly worked to. You know why? Why, why I'm saying you are people. saying the right thing? You are one of the few people. You are you are not using the word day for Kibgin or Kibgin is not using the word day for you at least you are calling each other by the first name which is such a <laughs> nice thing you are not uh, you are not using you are not making the other person it <laughs> Baya, no, 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 laga. Achha laga. please no no please don't be in you know wrong illusion we are not enemies number one we are only trying to sort out the complex issue that has been prevailing between us for quite some time that is my first, you know, submission. Number two, when my brother Thangmilian said that bringing in of injured people from across the border and giving them treatment in the, uh, you know, hospital inside the terri sovereign territory of India, there should be certain law which has to be applied accordingly. You must be aware of that. Without certain laws, you cannot do that. Without certain, you know, uh, orders or without certain sanctions or conditions issued by the Home Ministry or competent authority of the country, we cannot simply bring in or, you know, uh, smuggle in any sort of uh, foreign nationals inside the territory and give them treatment and send them back again. So that has to be, you know, uh, strictly uh, followed. That is what my, 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 my concern is. And another thing is, the recent issue is with those people who are trying to propagate the demand for separate administration and creating a separate cookie land by forgetting the state of Manipur. That is the major issue because we have been living here for a thousand years. Maitais, the Nagas and several cookie native people, we have been living here together for thousands of years. There wasn't any problem until and unless we have started feeling the sense of, you know, insecurity due to the uh, uh, uncontrolled migration of influx population from across the borders, impact to the forest areas with explosion of villages, then enhancement of drug trafficking from across the borders, and enhancement of, you know, uh, legitimization of the insurgency or kind of militancy uh, from among the Chinkuki communities, which has led to several, you know, uh, sort of violence and sort of all sort of political demand like, uh, you know, uh, the Jaw land or the Jalingam or the Kuki land or, you know, bifurcating the territory of Manipur, merging with Mizoram, Southern Mizoram concept, joining with, merging with the Chittagong Hill tracks again. So all these narratives has given a threat to the existence and the idea of Manipur. So every citizen, every ethnic community is who have been living in this area should show their allegiance to the state. We should try to live together. We should try to coexist together. Manipur cannot be divided in any ways. So they should not justify with some sort of violent movement and justify the circumstances saying that there is no, you know, any possibilities to stay together. We are, uh, you know, physically separated, geographically separated. Why not legally? All these things has created a sense of insecurities to the indigenous people of the uh, state. So this is what we, our, our concern is. We are not blaming the whole community. Okay, Mr. Kipgen. Yes, yes. Um, first, of, first of all, when you look at, you know, we need to understand the chronology of events. Um, going back to the time when the uh, uh, cookie underground groups came together to be overground, to have a discussion and dialogue with the government. And when the suspension of operation was initiated with the Kuki So groups, the, uh, the uh, Manipur state government and the Union government of India. That time, the clause there was that this demand for uh, you know, autonomous kind of administration that this Kuki So groups had, this was, this was not going to interfere with the integrity of Manipur. There was a strong clause that the integrity of Manipur would never be questioned, that it would never be broken. That shows our commitment 
to preserving the integrity of Manipur. That our intention was only to, you know, to strengthen the kind of administration that prevailed in the hills. Because unlike many areas where, which enjoy the Sikh schedule, the, the good protection, uh, in Manipur we do not have that kind of uh, constitutional protection. So even the even the Kuki so groups and the general population, we were all agreeable and we were all agreeing to maintaining and preserving the integrity of Manipur. That Kim, shows can, our can I ask you a tough question? Can I ask you a tough to question, Mr. Kibgin? Manipur. But then what happened? Mr. Kibgin, you answer this happened? question also. I'll ask you a tough question. No. I'll ask you a tough. Let me ask you a tough question. You have been, uh, uh, you, you, you have said everything you wanted to say. You know, when you talk of separate administration and sixth schedule, you already have a fifth schedule. Why can't fifth schedule be implemented properly? Sixth schedule only gives now, extra now, now, judicial powers. The, the, the story is going to go a, a, a little long. Yes, we, we were not satisfied with the fifth schedule because. I would like to take some some examples here. Uh, in our in our last debate, somebody had said that Manipur was shining before the before the incident of third May. You know, Manipur was hosting they were hosting the Femina Miss India. Manipur was hosting the the Tri Nation football football tournament. But this was a this was a wrong way of seeing Manipur. It was not Manipur that was hosting. Uh, you know uh, this thing the the Femina Miss India. It was the it was the Valley Manipur which was hosting it. It was the Valley Manipur that was hosting the Tri Nation football. So there is just one example. You know when when we talk about Manipur and we also have given a pledge to to protect and preserve the integrity of Manipur. But the reciprocation from the Manipur state government was not the same. We we do not have even one single one one proper government hospital in the in the entire district of Manipur. We have been time and again in, in my time as an activist in the, in the students' body as a, as the president of the KS of Southern Hills. We have time and again written submitted memorandums for upgradation of our hospital to to give proper medical facilities to our district. Everything okay. is neglected. So people became you know people wanted a higher form of uh, you know uh, uh, this thing uh, administration okay. for the hill areas. That is that is that is why no please let me complete. That is why that is why. We, the so group demanded for a territorial council within within the constitution within the constitution of india and to maintain the integrity of manipur okay. thereafter what happened under the leadership of chief minister such kind of labeling has started such kind of stereotyping started and name calling started and the seeds of you no know, uh, I, I wouldn't want to go into details everything everything began thereafter when 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 such you know when when such people we, we, we became compartmentalized within our own state. Uh, we could not s stay there anymore in the, within the okay. Valley. Separation happened. Then it is the outcome of this crisis. It is the outcome of this separation, of the social and demographic separation. Okay. That we are now asking for the central government to recognize this separate entity in the hills and to give it some form of formalized kind of an, an, an administration. That is how things things went. Okay, I think now you should allow Atuba to answer. I think now you should allow Atuba to answer because you have created a uh, genealogy of events. You said this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Mr. Atuba, please respond. I think uh, <coughs> I need not uh, deliberate long in this uh, okay. line of argument by, by my brother. I will just state two points. Number one, if that's the case, if that's the case that they want a territorial council and uh, they, 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 they abide by the, you know, maintaining the territorial uh, integrity of Manipur. Why is there a demand for uh, uh, pasting a certain signboards in Churachandpur about the southern Mizoram? And why is the Chief Minister of Mizoram, uh, you know, meddling in Manipur issues and asking for, you know, Manipur's uh, Chinkuki inhabited areas be, you know, uh, uh, when do all these things? Therefore, that is very see, important. I will send you, I will send News 9, the set of memorandums and reports and books published by the those Su group leaders where they have been developing a new political entity for a Jalingam, for a Kuki Jo land, which they said is absolute Kuki sovereign nation, merging certain parts of Manipur with 100% of Mizoram, Chittagong hill tracks of Bangladesh, and the Chin state of Myanmar and certain areas from Sagaing division of Kuki inhabited areas of Myanmar Sagaing division. They have been aspiring to create a Zhou nation. 
they already have this aspiration right from the MNF time of Mizoram. And the current chief minister is also looking forward to that. And because of that, they consider that get, getting autonomy from the state of Manipur for cookie dominated area is the first phase of success. This is a precursor to create a Joe nation. This has already been published in several books written by their own militant leaders. How could you just, you know, bluff the entire people like in such narrative? And as my brother Tamilian Kripjan is buying that argument of the cookie militants, it means that the cookie militants are working in coordination with the civil cookie in Manipur civil society groups as well. Definitely. So when the cookie militants are being considered, you know, uh, uh, if the government of India is now when they declare the certain groups uh, responsible for all these things, then civil society groups like UKNP Manipur is also going to be held responsible in this line. So I, I will send you all the documents no, and no. books. You know, you know, Mr. Atu, I don't the think Indian state is so weak that anyone can challenge its integrity. You know, uh, Indian state has seen the sort of uh, you know Naga, you know Naga militants going to Yunnan province. Uh, the you know Indira Gandhi was the prime minister, and Lal Denga tried to uh, take control of Mizoram. It didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. Indian state does not allow that. I understood. It might not happen because of the mighty Indian you know capacity, but because of that kind of uh, narratives and aspirations, there is an anxiety and sense of high sense of suspicion towards those people who are, you know, demanding for okay. a separate uh, territorial council okay. or let's any talk, sort of let's autonomy talk about, by let's talk about the aspirations and Manipur. narratives. Okay, I, 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 I have I have many to say here. For example, we we were never secessionists in the first place. We have seen many many underground movements in the northeast be it from the Alpha, the NSC and IM, and the various groups, uh, militant groups in Manipur as well, who have always been by blood and, and by nature and by demand, the political demand of armed groups who have always been secessionists. Who are the, who are the people who, who have always been against uh, displaying or portraying or, or screening of Bollywood films, who have always been against, you know, speaking of uh, you know, learning the Hindi language. Who are, who are those who have always who have always been, uh, you know, speaking outrightly and declaring that uh, uh, that national line, the, the Indian national anthem should never be sung on Independence Day. See, it's not. It's very easy to point fingers, but I, I, it is not something I wish I wish to do. That is why, if you see uh, among the local, you know, when you go during this crisis, when your reporters go to an individual, the locals who are present in the field, you will find that from our community, many of them speak fluent Hindi. At least they are able to put forward their points. But from Mete community, what we have seen is that it is a, there is a language barrier for them. Now it is something, it is a result of their boycotting of their banning of all Indian films be, from the, the Bollywood, banning of the Hindi language, banning of singing of the national anthem. This is the result. So let us not point fingers and say like who have been secessionists, who have been, you know, uh, fighting for what. The cookies we have put, we, they okay. have, the militants have penned their signature to the okay. tripartite agreement where to, to maintain the integrity of Manipur. Why did the Manipur state government withdraw itself from that tripartite agreement? Who are the ones who, who, who wanted to withdraw themselves? Okay. It is not the so groups, it is all okay. it's, it's the Manipur state government who, who started that. Okay, so I would, I would, I would, I would only like to say, I would only like to say, I would only like to say one thing, you know, I hope tomorrow the temperature. Uh, I hope tomorrow there is some sort of a conviviality in context of what's happening in Chula Chantra because we also get reports. You know, it's not easy for us to get reports, and it is our commitment, News Nine commitment, that we will cover Northeast, and we will cover Northeast in a way where people like you are involved, where original voices are involved, and the conversation is civil. Uh, but I hope. I hope this civility is also maintained on the ground because what we have seen is ghettoization of politics and people are living in different quarters. And on top of that, there is a very important statement which Solicitor General Tushar Mehta made. And our only point was because yesterday when we took up this conversation, the CGI had pulled up the state government saying that there is complete breakdown of law and order. But he, or the government of India said, you have foreign fighters. So the idea is, yes, there is a problem. But we should always be aware of the foreign hand because there is a great game which that is being played. And the integrity of India is paramount. And I think every politics, every action, every position 
should keep this in mind india first manipur first this is how this is how i see india first manipur first मैं इमरान अहमद खान याजी सबके दिल से हल्फ उठाता हूँ When Imran Khan came initially into politics, he thought his personal popularity would be sufficient for him. It didn't happen. The retired military generals uh, are openly saying that Imran Khan is a better choice. Imran Khan may have bitten a bit too much, more than what he can chew. Implosion. This and more streaming on world's first news OTT News 9 Plus download now